Yeah, what I'm hearing is is like sounds potentially like hormonal triggers that are causing the you know if if we kind of deciphered as the bird's biting for no reason, it's usually a hormonal trigger. And so we take one approach if, if that's what it is. There's a few things we can do to get on the right path there. What was the other? Oh, and then also the amount of out of cage time potentially, I think is like in playing a role. Using intentional sessions versus just that hanging is, out is one of the first thoughts I'm thinking for there too. In the tower that you have them sleeping in, do you, they always go into the same cage? So Yoshi's always in one, Toad's always in the other? Yeah, yeah. I want switching up if that would help. A hundred percent. So okay. top, our birds don't get very cage territorial because their space is always going to be different. So like we'll put, we'll rotate what bird goes and what aviary all the time and they oh. don't get to the spot where they're like possessive and or especially yeah. if they're hormonal already and they have their known space that now they're going to defend it can help feed into the triggers of hormones and so we'll just switch out which bird goes where and it really helps minimize if not eliminate for some of our birds the hormonal triggers let's start with the conure and the conure goals were to just make them less aggressive or what was the overall mm -hmm. just I don't well, know. we got them the pet store, and then we probably had them for a couple months, and then that's when we said you had the class. And like so said, then thought, they were clipped. We have not clipped them since his okay. his like the nails are, are growing a bit longer because we can't. Bed really appointment is in June, touch and them, yeah, we so. can't. They they'll step up. Sometimes they'll bite stepping up. <laughs> it okay. just really depends. You just want some yeah. foundational like, work. Is kind of what I'm hearing from yeah. right here. <laughs> this is our fourth class at, um, in two days, and. Every class has had like, we all want a flight train or we all want this. And then here's like, we just want the foundations. But it's been like yeah. interesting how they magically got grouped into these. Like, th this is perfect though, because th there's been examples we can give with somebody else's bird. So like we could work with Georgie and you're going to see with no emotions attached what you're doing wrong for your birds and vice versa. And so it's going to be really cool. Uh, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, no, you got it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says they both say thank you. <laughs> At the same time. Thank you. He can spin, wave. Um, he's been, we've been trying to get them like to hang down like a bat. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Can you do the spin without um, without the treat in your hand? No. Yeah, we can. I've been trying to catch We the have to bob, do the hand dress but, but we could do it without the treat in our hands. Like Houston. We've been trying to get the foundation of flight training without them obviously having the <laughs> since their wings grew in, we kinda of wanna do it since That's really so smart. Cute. Preventative. It's just I don't say to I say fly to me sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Honestly, the, the cue is your hand. It has nothing to do with the vocals in, in most cases. What are your thoughts right now? I mean, I don't see the aggressive behaviors, obviously, yet. But I do see that um, if you guys were to capture that, like, dancing little head bob thing, I wonder if you'd get a lot more heightened aggressive behavior in the future. Yeah, so... I hear you speaking in absolutes a lot, which is he loves training, he likes training, things that are that you're you're assigning a human emotion to it, right? Yeah. So or anthropomorphize. But I I more or less refer to it as speaking in absolutes. When you act on let's say you believe that he loves training and that that bouncing up and down is him being excited. I see that it's heightened. Mm -hmm. Heightened can be heightened good or heightened pissed. Yeah. And so if we're like, oh, but he loves it, and maybe he's mad, then we're t wanting to capture a behavior where he's actually really mad. And so we try to look at it from both directions. Anytime we hear ourselves saying like, oh, they love this, try to look at what would it look like if he hated it. So if you're getting random aggression, those are two things. Like if you're training always in a heightened state, that could be why you're getting aggression because he associates working with you when he's just heightened. And if you've been operating, it's like, oh, he loves this. It could be that you've just been reinforcing heightened and heightened has turned into aggression. The reason why we use aluminum perches is there's no self-reinforcing stimulus from like, if he's cracking in the wood, he's going to be self-reinforced where with this, 
there's no reinforcement, it becomes more neutral. So mm -hmm. we kind of eliminate variables with this particular stand. Yeah, our um, size is a wooden. But yeah. it's also re reassuring me that that this heightened behavior isn't what we want. I like. And you can see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you can see that Yoshi's feathers are growing in his aren't yet. We're going in the opposite direction, so that's probably not good. No. Okay. Yeah. So. If we're doing flight behaviors and we're trying to get a bird to fly and it's not wanting to, we might train another bird right next to it. Yeah, because that, I've seen that like almost time. jealousy, for lack of yeah. better term, will the one that takes better to training. Yeah, and it'll inspire the other one to yep. take the flight. But it really depends on what you're trying to train, as far as if it's okay to train them together. So real quick before we jump back to the conures, I want to show you. As I was saying in the beginning, I think that one of the things we're dealing with is hormones. And so we have what we call the hormones checklist. So most human males have this checklist too. There might be 10 different turn-ons, right? We only need one of those boxes checked, we're ready, right? <laughs> Females, on the other hand, it's unknown, right? There might be 10 boxes and one day you might check seven, one day you might check nine. And so I started a checklist over here, right? So birds have this hormones checklist too. And uh, if you're using the cage cover, Check that box, we're that much closer to being ready. Let's back it up a little bit, because I don't want you to have the impression that it's all the boxes have to be checked. You might be fine until you check the cage, there, you put them back in the cage and they're territorial of it. Now, that might be enough to send them over the edge so we're getting random biting all the time. So we can look at this list as pretty optimistically, like, well, we can eliminate the cage cover by putting them in a certain room with a timer. Now we don't need a cover. The light's gonna be on 12 hours. It's gonna be off 12 hours. Now we're one step further away from, uh, from hormones because this resembles building a nest and then tearing apart the nest. Build another nest, tear it apart. Yeah. Also, by doing that, you two birds, one stone, something, probably not the right <laughs> time. But now, instead of 10 hours of sleep, we're getting 12 hours of sleep so we can uncheck that. Obviously, there's a lot more that could be on that list, but I just want you to think of it in the term of like, yeah, we could totally get away with a few of those boxes being checked and not have a hormonal parrot. But the instant, like let's say that nothing else changed, but now it's spring. Spring might be the final step that puts them over the edge. Like, I don't know, it's been fine until spring hit and we'll, we'll blame it on spring, but really we've just manifested everything that your birds need to go into breeding season unintentionally. But since we're here, I think I wanna do a training session on a flat surface and see if we can capture or train something that isn't as heightened. The focus is capturing calm. All of a sudden, I tuned into MTV. What happened? It's okay. cute. It's like I don't know if I want the trigger now. So see how already there's a different demeanor to change something in the environment. It's also related back to what we were talking about. So you could do that target stick only like those two, like this way. Yeah, like one less. There you go, right there. And already, like, I know that we spent more time with Yoshi, but this is more of the behavior. I want to pair calm targeting versus super hype. They do it quick. I don't know how to slow it down. They're... Okay. So the clicker timing is something that's really important to look here. If you reflect back to just capturing the wave, we captured here's when we clicked. Think of using a clicker as taking a picture of the exact moment you want so that you can save that picture and see it again and again and again. And so you're getting behavior, but you're clicking when it's over. And so I think that's why you're getting it fast, because like, the faster I finish it, the faster you have to click. Where, where up here, we waited, and the more we waited, the more he held his foot up. So try to click at the top of the wave. Yeah, I'm there slow. you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good, though. He had his head and scratches everything, and now it just puts the last one. He just bites. So, that's an interesting thing about the human element with birds, is we think that they should want to be pet. Mm, yeah. Because we're conditioned as a dogs, or, or the mm -hmm. human emotion of you know physically touching each other, that act releases endorphins, and so we think that every living creature wants to be pet. And it's not natural. And they, they don't necessarily. Can I see the step up? Should I do the treat? Or? However, However you're gonna be successful. Up. So this time, can you do it without the treat, but act like you still have it in your hand? Yeah, that looks great. You should come out of this kennel at first. Uh, sign. So the treat being lower, how you had it lower, oh. draws all the attention downward. 
So that's why you're getting beak first. That's why you're most likely gonna get from beak first to a bite, because you won't know if the intention is to step up with his beak or to bite you. And it was because all the treats are down here, so all of his attention is down, which brings his beak down. And so how you were for that. Yeah, and how you were stepping him up before when you were like, This is the most likely thing, you were like, I have to have the treat up here. It was a perfect step up because you had all the attention upwards. See how I'm able to work through that? That's what we want to see. Yeah, so all the attention was directed upwards. So Dave knew that any time he was putting his face down, his intention was to bite. Yeah. And he's super gentle about it. Think of it as like a warning. So so let's work on the step ups, yeah. getting him really clean without using his beak. You step up? Look, that was a hop, I'm sorry. That was too close. Remember to watch that clicker timing. Yeah, you yeah. clicked and his feet were flat on the ground. Okay. Can you step up? There we go. <laughs> right, so you can see how it's a it's a ballet of, of really orchestrating both my hands yeah. to get the behavior I want. And that was a great one. Oh, that was? Gonna be yeah. jumps? He jumped up to it. But yeah, so try that again. <laughs> Perfect. That was great. If you did a session of just that, once a day, you'd have an amazing bird. So he was gently putting his foot on you. You'll get to the point where you can get shake or high five. You can start to use that because you have a, a good foundation again. Can you try it now? Yeah, do you want to do some? Yeah. This is, well, okay. Um, You're okay. I'll click for you too. So. Yeah, and just so can click for you so you don't have to worry about the clicker. Don't. Nice. And it's just even with that, he's getting conditioned that this is the new trick to do. So no click on that, because he uses beak, even though it's gentle. Mm -hmm. So you want to intercept. You want to intercept if it looks like he's going to use his beak, redirect that attention. Right? So I'm just redirecting everything by where I put that tree. Yep. Nice. See so the way he was looking at it? He was like, where do I step? Where? Yeah. Okay, so no. I'm going to warm up with some targets. <clears throat> and notice how, and I'm going to try to keep my energy low, but notice how he... Oh, oh, sorry. Hadn't been bobbing. There you go. Kiss two. Okay, kick up two. Okay, let's go for a step up now. Kiss up. Usually, pretty good about seeing the tree too. Okay, so no click on that. So you use the <coughs> first. So that comes down to the human element. You can move over here if you need to see better. He keeps using his beak. I here. Let me. Is it okay? So you want his attention on. You kind of want to use the treat to direct his yeah. attention, and yep, yep. The, nope. the hand is the bustle to get to the treat. Come on. He's trying to wave. Come on. <laughs> He's waving. got a great wave. And, well, hey, can you pay attention? Right, okay. Step up. Oh, there we go. That, that is step up as a trick. Good job. Mm -hmm. That was great. No. no. Step up. Step up. So come on. Come on. Perfect. Yeah, you're working through that beautifully. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, gonna gonna I'm just gonna jump. I thought he was gonna try biting for me first. <laughs> also, everybody notice how he hasn't been all heightened in body. Yeah, I was gonna. No, no, I was thinking about that. So, just training with him in different areas could really help that. And different types of surfaces is a big part. Okay. No. Step up. It's that's, quite the song and dance, right? Yeah. Really, right. <laughs> no. Oh, so close. Don't she please? Like, come on, just give me it. You can give a treat on the next one <laughs> if can. he doesn't bite hard. But yeah, just go ahead and give the treat so we don't make him mad. Yeah. We don't want to fail too many times. My rule of thumb is that out of every three attempts, they should have one success. <laughs> okay. So they don't get mad. Come here. No nope. treat. That used to be if you didn't treat come them on. every time. Then right here. Nope. And down. Right here, look at see this. Good job. Thank so, you. <laughs> so what I'm seeing initially, he's gonna he's better off to do a short hop because he can't use his beacon hop. So oh. So if you have to do that for now <laughs> and then and then come a little bit and closer. Then slowly back it up. Yeah. Then slowly go closer. Well yeah. So really reiter reiterate like so no beacon. It's the bad bad. <laughs>
There we go. Cool. Left hand there. Okay. Yeah, come on. Came back. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's put them away. You guys both have awesome birds. Like these birds are you have a really good foundation and it's more for us it's more about trying to teach you how to focus in on the strengths and how to enhance that. And I think for the two of you, the biggest thing will be making sure that you have a clear picture of what you want to accomplish before you even take them out of the cage. You've spent way too much time with these birds reacting to what they're offering rather than shaping what you want. Yeah, and I think that you'll find the more consistent you are with, hey, step up is a trick, and this trick specifically requires you to not use your beak, the more long-term success you'll have. But since there hasn't been a clear guideline for him, he's going to do whatever he wants. So to you, it's like, oh, he was really good today, but he was really bad last time. That all is is just because he hasn't been told what the right way is. He just thinks, i got to get to your finger no matter what. And what you want is him to get to your finger without using his beak. right? So we just need to show him, like, hey, this is exactly what we want, and we're going to click for that perfect behavior we want to see again. A huge thanks to Snake Discovery for hosting our master classes this weekend. If you haven't heard of them, I'm surprised. And so if you haven't, go check them out right now. We'll leave the links below. Why are you looking at me like that? There we go. I was waiting for the tongue. It's cool.